Welcome. You're viewing the video version of the Santu Pearls Stock Market Commentary for January 3rd, 2016. Market Breadth. With this past week's market decline, our bull bear point and figure ratio at 0.73 rose from 0 0.70 last week, but remains in bearish territory. The total count of securities in bullish or bearish patterns rose 3% to 3,011. The count of bearish stocks increased 1%, while the count of stocks in bullish patterns increased 6%. The Santu Pearls PNF Market Breadth Summary Chart shows us a market now 30 consecutive weeks in bearish territory. Paid subscribers have access to the Open Office Calc data from which the chart is generated. You may become a paid subscriber by visiting s2pmarketsignal.com, clicking Membership, clicking Register, and following the prompts. To receive a free subscription, to the Santu Pearls Stock Market Commentary via email, simply enter your email address in the provided space. The well-known market breadth indicator, the NASDAQ McClellan Summation Index, rose 49 points for the 12th advance in 18 weeks. At a negative 202.07 points, it continues below all seven tops above plus 100 has risen back above the February 2015 low, continues above all four additional previously formed bottoms below minus 100 in the last three years, and has formed the new December 2015 bottom. Volume Analysis In this week's Volume Analysis, the NASDAQ Composite Index ended in distribution mode with average daily volume lower than the prior week. In the last two weeks, the NASDAQ had two accumulation days and two distribution days. Accumulation days are counted when the index closes up on higher volume than the prior market day, while distribution days occur when the index closes down on volume higher than the prior market day. Last week, the NASDAQ ended in neither accumulation nor distribution mode on lower average daily volume. Momentum. The CCI 20 daily had two days above zero this last week, but at minus 11.35 has fallen back below without generating a zero line reject short entry signal. In Woody's CCI trading system, Six consecutive bars above or below zero are required for a change of trend. The weekly CCI 20 of the NASDAQ Composite Index began a Woody's uptrend five weeks ago, while the daily CCI 20 began a Woody's downtrend two weeks ago. One week ago, the CCI 20 weekly formed a zero line reject long entry signal within the plus or minus 50 range. This week it rose, so we stay in the trade. We will continue to follow this trade simulation in next week's commentary. Industry rotation, the last two weeks. All of the top five industries are positive, and all of the bottom five industries are negative. Bullish REITs continues in the top five. Computer hardware has left the bottom five and has entered the top five. Oil has left the top five. Bearish, disk drives, and comp tech continue in the bottom five. S&P Retail has entered the bottom five. Gold and Silver has left the bottom five and entered the top five. Focus this week from Charles Hugh Smith's Of Two Minds blog. If you want to limit the power of the super wealthy, stop using their money. The following are some of the key points. The only way to reverse rising inequality and break the power of the super wealthy financial aristocracy is to stop using their central bank issued currencies. Many well-meaning people want to limit the wealth and power of the super wealthy, that is, the financial aristocracy oligarchy. Reformers have suggested everything from a global tax on wealth 
to publicly owned banks to limiting the pay to play circus of campaign contributions. None of these will change the power structure or limit the super wealthy. As I explained last week, if we don't change the way money is created and distributed, we change nothing. The super wealthy will either move their capital elsewhere, derail the reforms, or have their political lackeys water the reforms down to the point they are nothing but a politically useful illusion of change. Though the vast majority of us have little opportunity to use money that isn't issued by central banks, that's changing. Bitcoin is the most well-known example of a non-state, non-central bank form of global money, but there are many more in use or in development. A nation-state in which the populace is free to use a variety of competing currencies is a nation-state in which the state can't fund itself with newly issued funny money or distribute new money to the super wealthy. States will naturally suppress competing currencies and outlaw any threat to their monopoly. That Bitcoin is not yet illegal in the U.S. is a surprise. What isn't a surprise is that Goldman Sachs has sought patents on its own cryptocurrency. Goldman Sachs wants to create its own version of Bitcoin. Those who believe states can never lose control of their currency should consider what happens in hyperinflation. When states debauch their currencies and push them over the cliff, people abandon the currency in favor of money that holds its value and acts as a means of exchange. As far-fetched as it may sound today, I suspect there will be a ruthlessly Darwinian sorting of currencies within the next 10 years. Nations with broken national currencies that adopt non-state competing currencies will outperform nations that cling to centralized, enrich the super wealthy model of central bank issued currencies. Everyone who is convinced that the current status quo is permanent and unbreakable should consider what happened to the super wealthy private landholders of the Western Roman Empire. When the empire's power to coerce broke down, the super wealthy vanished into the dustbin of history. Few believed that possible in 475 AD, but history isn't a matter of belief. Believing it isn't possible doesn't stop history. Thank you for viewing this week's Santu Pearls stock market commentary video featuring the proprietary bull bear point and figure market breadth summary chart compiled by Donald Pearl, www.s2pmarketsignal.com. Hoping that you have enjoyed a pleasant and peaceful holiday season, that you are looking forward to a prosperous and productive week coming up and 2016, and wishing you true success.